Good morning, everybody. Hi, this is Nurse Eunice with Florida Train Academy, and I have missed you all. It has been a busy um, last two weeks, but um, I wanted to come out and shoot a video this morning and just help you all with your medical terminology. And so, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, if this is your first time tuning in, please let us know where you're tuning in from. Otherwise, good morning, Lisi, and good morning to those who are up bright and early on Sunday morning um, preparing for their CNA exams. And let's go ahead and begin. Number one, everybody, what is the medical term for difficulty breathing? A, dyspnea, B, tach, excuse me, tachypnea, C, braid, braid, I can't even say it this morning, bradynipia, and also, um, that says B twice, that is so wrong, I apologize, you all, D is hypoxia, and so let's talk about some of these um, beginning or prefixes, so whenever you see DYS, that means difficulty or pain, tacky means fast, Brady means slow. And so difficulty breathing, D-Y-S, that's your hint, stands for difficulty or pain. So I'm thinking that A is the answer. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. And guess what, everybody? Dyspnea refers to difficulty or discomfort in in breathing. So I'm going to put in the chat, anytime you see D-Y-S as a prefix, it means difficulty. And so once you start learning the prefixes, it's going to help you understand terminology better. All right, so let's go to number two. Question number two. All right, and so if you all haven't downloaded our medical terminology guide, it is free. Go to nurseunis.com. It's just going to ask for your first name and your email address, and you'll get an immediate link where you can download the um, book. But that is going to help you study your medical terminology. I find that CNAs who have a hard time with the written test, they're having difficulty because they don't understand the root words. They don't understand prefixes and suffixes. So if you understand terminology, you'll be a better CNA, and the test will be a lot easier for you. All right, let's go to number two. A patient with hypertension has. Let's talk about the prefix hyper. Does anyone in the audience know what hyper stands for? All right, I've typed it in the chat. So whenever you see the, um, the term hyper in front of a word, that means it's excessive, it's increased. So a person with hypertension has A, low blood pressure, B, low blood pressure, C, normal blood pressure, or D, irregular blood pressure. Hi, Chanel, you're absolutely correct. It is high. So the answer is going to be B as in boy, hypertension refers to high blood pressure. So great job. Hi, Vivette. Congratulations, Vivette. I am so proud of you. And thank you for tuning in to let us know that you passed your exam. You all make me so happy. Good morning, Millie. Number three, <laughs> believe it or not, a lot of the nurses who come to us for CPR classes, they don't know this answer and they laugh, but it's it's embarrassing. Um, three, <laughs> what does the term CPR stand for? Is it A, cardiovascular pulmonary resuscitation? Is it B, continuous patient recovery? Is it C, chest pressure release? Um, or is it D, cardiopulmonary reassessment? <laughs> I know my CNAs be smarter than some nurses at times. Nurses don't get mad at me. But when you come to the CPR class, please know what CPR stands for. And for everybody who chose A, you are absolutely correct. CPR stands for cardiovascular pulmonary resuscitation. Cardiovascular referring to the heart, pulmonary referring to the lungs, resuscitation, the two skills you're going to be performing, chest compressions and rescue breaths. Good morning, Edwin. Good morning, Samantha, Naya. Good morning, Jay. Number four, which of the following vital signs measures the number of heartbeats per minute? Is it A, respiratory rate, B, blood pressure, C, heart rate, or D, temperature? This is easy. Heartbeats per minute. Boom, 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 boom. Revealing the answer in three, two, and one. Yep. If you all chose C, heart rate, you are correct. The heart rate measures the number of heartbeats per minute. So sometimes we'll use the terms pulse and heart rate interchangeably. But pulse is something that you would be able to feel with your fingers. And the heart rate is something that we can see on the monitor or that whenever you have your stethoscope, you can also listen to how fast the heart is beating. 
Number five, a patient complains of heartburn. What is the medical term for indigestion? All right, so let's teach you some more prefixes. Anytime you see A-R-T-H, so A is arthralgia. Anytime you see A-R-T-H in front of a word, think of arthritis, that refers to a joint. B, myalgia. Anytime you see M-Y-A or M-Y in front of a medical term, that refers to muscle. C, we talked about difficulty, Dys, um, dyspepsia, D-Y-S-P-E-P-S-I-A, dyspepsia refers to something with the stomach, but I'll, you know, let's go down the colic. D, colic, that's when a normal baby, a healthy baby just starts crying and usually it's from gas or something going on with their, their digestive system. And so babies usually don't have like indigestion like what adults have. So let's go back to number five, a patient complains of heartburn. What is the medical term for indigestion? Oh, you all are smart. You all are so smart. It is C, dyspepsia. Woohoo! Dyspepsia is another word for indigestion. People with chronic indigestion often report feelings of stomach pain, over fullness, and bloating during and after eating. This is why when you feed your patients, we don't lay them back immediately. They need to sit up to give their food time to digest and to reduce the occurrences of acid reflux. Six, uh, let's see if you all know your abbreviations. If a patient is prescribed medication to be taken BID, how often should they take it? A, once a day, B, twice a day, C, three times a day, or D, four times a day. I'm going to help you out. Anytime you see BI in front of a word, it usually means two or twice. If you see T-R-I in front of a word, that means thrice or three times. And if you see Q, that usually means quad or four times. So let's see. I see the correct answers, everybody. Yes, B-I-D refers to twice per day. And if you're not taking notes, take these notes down because we just never know um, when you get your first jobs, they may require you to learn medical terminology and abbreviations and you'll already be a step ahead of the game. All right. And so there we go. BID stands for bis and die. A lot of our terms come from the Latin um, culture. And so um, we, you know, we may not know to use the Latin phrases anymore, but we definitely use this abbreviation, which means twice per day. Number seven. What is the medical term for the measurement of body temperature? A, barometry, B, thermometry, C, spirometry, or D, spigmomanometry. <laughs> Yes, Samantha. Yes, Chantel. Perfect. So barometry refers to the measurement of atmospheric pressure. So unless you're a meteorologist, you're not going to be, you know, studying the patient's barometry. <laughs> Thermometry is the actual measurement of body temperature. Spirometry. So when you're in the hospital setting, especially if a patient has a lung condition, you're going to see a device called a incinospirometer. It's a breathing device where your patient's suck in really deep. You're going to encourage them to do that during every commercial break a few times a day to exercise those lungs. But spirometry measures how much a person can breathe in and out. And then spigmomanometry actually refers to you taking the blood pressure. So anytime you see this crazy S-P-Y-H-G word, um, that is referring to blood pressure. So you all knew this answer. It was easy. Thermometry is the measurement of body temperature. I'm going to be quiet for this one. I'm going to see if you get the answer. A, a patient is diagnosed with diabetes mellitus. What is the term for high blood sugar? A, hyperglycemia, B, hypoglycemia, C, hyperlipidemia, or D, hypertension? Let's see what we got. Yes, Naya. Great job. Elise, yes. Chanel, yes. So hyper. Hyper refers to an elevation, something that's increased. And glycemia is another way to say the actual sugar that's within the bloodstream. Lipidemia refers to the lipids or the cholesterol. And it wouldn't be B because hypo means low. So great job to everyone who chose A, hyperglycemia. 
Number nine, I already gave you this one. What is the medical term for inflammation of the joints? Is it A, myalgia? Is it B, arthritis? Is it C, osteoporosis? Or D, tendinitis? I see you, Chanel. I see you, Samantha. All right, Chanel, you got it. Yes, Abigail, great job. So remember, anytime you see the prefix A-R-T-H in front of a word, it is referring to joints. And arthritis is inflammation of the joints. Keep those patients moving, and that's going to help decrease their pain and improve their quality of life. 10, what is the medical term for a broken bone? A, dislocation, B, sprain, C, fracture, D, strain. All right, in three, two, and one. Fracture refers to a broken bone. Yes, you're right. Great job. We're going to go back and talk about the others. A dislocation is not a broken bone. It's like a separation at the joint. A sprain refers to a swelling of like a, a ligament. And then a strain is the pulling of a muscle. So fracture is when something's actually broken or fractured. 11. What does the term CVA stand for? A. Cardiovascular act, attack. B. Cerebrovascular accident. C. Coronary vessel aneurysm. Or D. Cranial vein agitation. Good morning, Tenzin. What does CVA stand for? Close Chantel, try again. Elise. Try again, Chanel, try again. CVA stands for cerebrovascular accident. It refers to a stroke. Anytime you see the prefix, um, prefix cerebro or just cerebro, um, that refers to the brain. And so I'm going to type in an acronym. Whenever you think a patient is having a stroke, I need you to think fast. I need you to look at their face. It's probably not going to be symmetrical or even. One side is going to be drooping. You're going to ask them to raise their arm. One arm won't lift as high. You're going to ask them to speak, and their speech is going to be garbled. And then T, it's time for you to call that code. If you're in home care, you're calling 911. But T means it's time to call for help. So the fast assessment, face, arm, speech, time to call. And that would be when your nurse would come in. We would call a team stroke or a code stroke, and we would start treating that patient for a possible CVA. All right, 12. A patient has been prescribed medication. QID, I know you know this, how often should they take it? A, once a day, B, twice a day, C, three times a day, or D, four times a day? QID. Yes, Abigail. Yeah, it's four times a day. So I'm going to put that in. Bi equals, if I can type, twice. Tri equals. Oh, you all, I'm not, I'm not typing well today. I apologize. <laughs> Try equals um, three. And then anytime you see Q or quad, that equals four. Thirteen, what is the medical term for inflammation of the liver? A, hepatitis, B, nephritis, C, arthritis, or D, gastritis. So let's talk about the ending, the suffix. Anytime you see I-T-I-S at the end of the word, that means inflammation. So now we have to figure out where is the inflammation. Close, Abigail, let's not be nephritis, whenever you see neph in front of a word, that refers to the urinary or the kidney. So neph is for kidneys. 
Yes, Chanel. A, whenever you see HEPA or HEPA in front of a word, that refers to the liver. And then ARTH we talked about was arthritis or joints and gastritis is the, in the, the gas part is the internal lining of the stomach. So think about gastric juices. So you all, hepatitis was the answer. Remember when you see the I-T-I-S at the end of a word, that means inflammation. Oh, this one's hard. 14, a patient with a high fever, you all may want to look up these words really quick, is experiencing A, hypothermia, B, excuse me, A is hyperthermia, B is hypothermia, C, normothermia, D, pyrexia, E, both A and D. Naya, where are you taking your test and with what company? Like what state and what company? Is it um, Florida and Prometric or Georgia and Pearson View? And then maybe we can give you more assistance. Elise, Naya. All right. So it is both A and D. So it is E, everybody, pyrexia. All right, so hypothermia refers to a high body temperature or a fever. So you all were partially right. Pyrexia refers to a body temperature greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. It is not a term that we use often, but if you're working with pediatric populations, you probably will hear pyrexia. So Naya, um, call Prometric on Monday and try, if you're trying to submit your application from your phone, I don't want you paying twice. Um, if you're still having difficulty, just call Prometric and see if they can assist you. And I, I always recommend to our students that they don't use their phone. They use a regular computer to submit their applications. All right, so 15, what is the medical term for a rapid heartbeat? Bradycardia, tachycardia, arrhythmia, bradynipia. All right, so let's teach you some more prefixes. Brady is slow. Tacky is fast. Look at the root word, the center, the middle part of arrhythmia. Talks about rhythm, but when you put A in front of a word, that means the absence of. So Miss Eunice can't dance, so she kind of has arrhythmia. <laughs> And D is slow again. So the only one that has a prefix that means rapid is what, everybody? That is right. That is B, tachycardia. So tachycardia refers to a rapid heartbeat. And rapid heartbeats can happen due to um, dehydration. So when you're feeling those pulses, it's important because you're going to be noticing things about these patients like, whoa, that's too fast. <laughs> and so you don't always need an EKG machine or a telemetry monitor. If you're a good CNA, you can feel that pulse and be like, hmm, this is a fast heartbeat. Let me make sure my patient's situated. Stay in the bed till I can go get the nurse. And also drinking all these caffeinated beverages can also cause someone to have tachycardia, just F. FYI. What's hard, Samantha? I'm, I may have missed um, a statement. Oh, no, Millie. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, um, I'm going to put my email address in here. Let me, but I need to know like what state you're in. And then if you can send me your results, then I can um, try to assist you. I'm proud of you, Samantha, for starting your CNA classes. And again, if you all are just tuning in, my name is Nurse Eunice with Florida Train Academy. And I try to get on here at least twice a week so that I can train my babies. I pray for you all. I help you all study. I can only do so much because I am a limited resource, but I do try to get on here so that you can learn these terms, that you can learn these skills and you can pass your test. If you want to download our freebies, go to Nurse nurseunits.com and um, go ahead and do that today and you can download our cheat sheet and you can also download our study guide for medical terminology. All right, so next slide, number 16. A patient with difficulty swallowing is experiencing. Woo-wee. So I told you all that the prefix for um, dif difficulty was D-Y-S, <laughs> but now you have to learn some of the root words. So dysphagia is A, B is dyspnea, C is dysuria, D is diplopia. Great job. I don't want to say, say your name wrong. A, a bang B? Great job. It is A. 
it is A. So, and I said the last one wrong, it's diplopia. All right, so dysphagia, when you see the P-H-A-G-I-A, -A, that means swallowing. When you see Nia, the P is silent. Nia refers to breathing. When you see urea, what does that sound like, everybody? That's right. Urea relates to the urinary system. All right. So, and then diplopia is um, blurry vision or double vision. So the answer, you all were correct, is A, dysphagia is the medical term for difficulty swallowing. And what types of patients would have dysphagia? We just spoke of one. CVA. So when someone has a stroke and they have facial drooping, they usually also have to be prescribed a soft or a pureed diet because they would have difficulty with swallowing. OK, we don't want them aspirating. And you don't want to feed them on their weak side of their body or their mouth. You want to feed them on the side that has more movement. 17. What does the abbreviation NPO mean? A, nothing by oral. B, no prescription ordered. C, nonprofit organization. Or D, nightly patient observation. Elise, good luck in advance. Good morning, Kador. Hey, Mariana. Yes, yes, yes. And so it says nothing by oral. And so what we do is we simplify it and we say nothing by mouth. So 17 is A is an apple. NPO stands for nothing by oral or nothing by mouth, indicating that the patient should not eat or drink, which means that my CNAs who are setting up their rooms and your patient comes in and their diet order is NPA, don't fill up the water pitcher. I don't care what we tell that patient. If you put a water pitcher full of water in their room, they're going to drink it. And we're either going to cause their health concern to be worse or delay their surgery. So when they're NPO, that equals empty water pitcher. <laughs> 18, if a patient is um, described as ambulatory, what can be inferred about their condition? When a patient is ambulatory, a, they require a wheelchair. B, they are bedridden. C, they can walk and move around. D, they need assistance with standing. Ambulatory is a big word that means something small. It means C. <laughs> when your patient is ambulatory, they can walk. <laughs> All right. And so whenever they're walking, you still it's like you're always on guard when they're walking. Please make sure they have the proper socks, the medical socks with the little skids on the bottom or that they have on regular shoes so they don't fall while they're walking. Good job. Good one. 19. What is the medical term for difficulty in speaking? So not difficulty swallowing. All right. And this one looks quite similar. A is aphasia. Remember when A is in front of the word, that means they can't do it at all. B is dysphagia, not phagia, like the last word. C is dysarthria or D is anosmia. It's not A, everybody, because A in front of a medical word means the absence. This person wouldn't be able to speak at all if they had aphasia. So yes, it is B, it is dysphagia. Remember, dysphagia was difficulty in swallowing. Dysphagia is difficulty in speaking. Great job. And phasia is the suffix or the um, term that means speech in medical terminology. 20, a patient has an injury characterized by swelling and bruising. What is the term for this injury? A, strain, B, sprain, C, contusion, or D, fracture? I'm gonna tell everybody, because I see Chantel, it's not A, because you can see bruising. Usually a strain is more internal. So you don't see bruising due to a strain. It's a word that you will probably only hear if you've taken first aid. And for everybody who's choosing C, contusion, 
ding, 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 ding. You are right. So a contusion refers to a bruise with swelling. A sprain is damage to a ligament. So remember, that's more internal. Yes, the leg may still swell up, but it's not necessarily a contusion. A contusion is when you see bruising and swelling. It's more external. Okay, and that is caused by damage to blood vessels in and under the skin. Whenever someone has an injury, of course, we're going to rice it. We're going to rice stands for rest, ice, compress, and elevation. All right, so you're going to rice if someone has a contusion. 21, what does the term PRN mean in medical prescriptions? All right, so A, patient requests narcotics, B, prorenata, C, prescription required now, or um, that should be D, oh my God, prioritize regularly needed. All right, so PRN. Yes, 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 yes. So it's pretty much as needed. That is it. PRN is going to be, it's, uh, this is so wrong, y'all. <laughs> this is prorenator, but we, we say um, as needed. And this may be going back to the Latin term. I will go back and research this a little bit more, but I agree with you all the last one, um, D. So um, I stand corrected on this one. It is B as in boy, because I don't know Latin. 22, the medical term for difficulty in sleeping is synabulism, B, insomnia, C, narcolepsy, or D, hypersomnia. So what do you think the term is? They're having difficulty sleeping. Yes, Chanel. Yes, Mariana. Yes, Kadori. Yes, Abengi. Great job, everybody. It is B as in boy. So the other ones mean that the person can sleep. Like narcolepsy, they're just sitting up and they fall asleep even after they've you know just woken up. Hypersomnia, that means they're excessively sleepy, okay? Great job. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and do so. All right, 23, what is the medical term for a nosebleed? All right, is it rhinorrhea? Is it B, um, epistaxis? Is it C, um, atria? Or is it D, pharyngitis? Remember, if you see I-T-I-S on the end of the word, it means inflammation. So we know it's not D. The prefix ada or oda in front of a word usually refers to the ear. So let's go, let's go, let's go. We know it's either A or B, and we're teaching you a new term today. And it's not A, it is B. <laughs> Epistaxis refers to a nosebleed. And so rhinorrhea, everybody, I know you've seen that term before, but that refers to a runny nose. So those little kids with the little snot dripping down, they have <laughs> rhinorrhea. But um, epistaxis is the correct term for nosebleed. Twenty-four. A patient with diabetes experiences low blood sugar. What is the term for this condition? A, hyperglycemia, B, hypoglycemia, C, hyperlipidemia, or D, hypertension. I know all 100 of you are going to get this answer right. What is the answer, everybody? I'm doing my little nurse dance over here. Hey, great job. Hypoglycemia <laughs> refers to low blood sugar levels. And I hate to tell you all, I'm this goofy in person. <laughs> 25, a patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD may experience, <laughs> yes, key, A, bradynip um, bradynipia, um, C, tachnipia, C is dyspnea, or A is apnea. So difficulty. Um, I see a patient with COPD may experience, COPD is a, um, a lung disease. So whenever you see P-N-E-A at the base of the word or at the end of the word, that relates to breathing. So um, all of these refer to breathing, but which one do you think it is? You know, um, 
a bang B. I thought it was B also. And I do agree with you that it's B. But Mariana, according to my resources, I think you had it right. It is C, dyspnea, is a common symptom in patients with COPD indicating difficulty in breathing. And so what is the best position? For me, it's not that you get these terms right or wrong. I need for you when you to really see the clinical picture of this, your patient you who has a diagnosis of COPD, how do you want them in the bed? Do you want them laying flat? <laughs> No, we're going to elevate the head of the bed to their comfort, but we're not going to keep them up on their tailbone for too long. So be sure to make sure you turn them every two hours or more often as needed so they don't get a pressure sore. But when someone has a respiratory condition, the head of the bed needs to be upright at least 45 degrees. OK, and you can raise them up higher when it's time for them to eat a meal. So anytime someone is dyspneic, the head of the bed should be elevated. 26, what is the medical term for the surgical removal of the uterus? Got to learn some more terms. A, hysterectomy, B, mastectomy, C, appendectomy, or D, nephrectomy. All right, so I think you get the Tommy <laughs> means removing something. All right. So whenever you see the ending, the, the suffix, um, T-O-M-Y, they took something out. Abigail, Godwin, Naya, Mariana, you all are correct. It is hysterectomy. So when you see the H-Y-S-T word, that usually refers to um, the female organ or the uterus. Mastectomy, that's usually referring to breast at Pen is referring to the appendix, and we talked about nephro before. Nephro refers to the kidney. So process of elimination, the answer is A, removal of the uterus. 27, if a patient has myocardial infarction, what condition have they experienced? Myocardial, A, stroke, B, Heart attack, C, seizure, D, pneumonia. Yes, Kador. Yes, Godwin. Yes, Abigail, you all are correct. So myo refers to muscle, cardio refers to the heart, and infarction means that we lost blood flow to that area, which means it lost oxygen, it has died. So myocardial infarction is a medical term for heart attack. B was the correct response. 28, the medical term for the act of coughing up blood is A, hemoptysis, B, hematemesis, C, hematuria, or D, hemolysis. Whenever you see lysis at the end of the word, that's destruction. So we know it's not D. We said urea refers to what? Urine. So unless this person is coughing up urine, we know it's not C. <laughs> so it's either A or B. And I hope that you see that hema and hemo refers to blood. So let's figure out where this blood is coming from. Is it A or B? Hemoptysis refers to the act of coughing up blood. The other one, hematemesis, um, that emesis refers to vomit. So this person would be vomiting up blood if it was B. The correct answer for 28 is A. And if that happens, reassure the patient and, of course, call that nurse in right away. 29, what does the abbreviation ROM stand for in healthcare? A, range of motion. B, rapid onset migraine. C, respiratory oxygenation measurement. That was a long word. <laughs> and D, repeated observation mandate. <laughs> what does ROM stand for? Yes, everybody. Range of motion exercises is the correct response. Great job. And we're on our last one, you all. You know I'm going to miss you all. 30. A patient with a blackened eye is diagnosed with A, dislocation, B, fracture, C, sprain, D, periorbital, um, periorbital excuse me, hematoma. And that is spelled correctly. Um, it's just, again, using Latin. What do you think the term is? And 
cupcake pancakes. You're right, Abigail, you're right. Good job, everybody. So let's teach you another term, another prefix. When you see peri, peri stands for the surrounding area. So the surrounding area of the orbital. When you see orbital, think of eye. So surrounding the eye has a hematoma or blood under the skin. So you all are correct. A black eye is also known as a periorbital hematoma, and it develops when fluids collect in the tissues around the eye. And so before we exit this, you know, live stream, if you learned at least one new medical term or one new prefix or suffix, would you please put it in the chat? And I will try to schedule another video, um, if not today, tomorrow. And I appreciate you all. Are there any questions before we end our live stream? stream. And please, I do want to know that you learned something. So if you learned a new term, put it in the chat. I put on my serious nurse uniform, you all. Look at me in my white lab coat, even though I'm just in a room with mannequins most of the time, but still, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Don't forget to go to nurseunits.com so you can download your free cheat sheets. And if you happen to know a nurse, or even some of my CNAs, I help them open and run businesses also. So Chantel, Samantha, um, Pancakes, I love that. Keep Pancakes, um, Abraham. Thank you so much, Samantha and Kator. You know I appreciate you all. And until next time, you all have a great weekend. Enjoy football. And I'll see you soon. All right. Bye, everybody. I appreciate you.